The notion of Asia literacy for schools is to develop a strong cohort of young Australians that will speak an Asian language by the time they leave school, and that all young Australians will have foundational and deep knowledge skills and understanding of the histories, geographies, arts and literature of the diverse countries of Asia. The aim of the Asia and Australia's engagement with Asia TLC has been to engage staff in meaningful professional development in order to develop resources that will support Asia literacy for students across the curriculum and across our school's partnership. Yes, we're fortunate to have a passionate community of teachers working to identify and provide a range of resources and opportunities for our students to develop their Asia literacy. However, it's important to take a moment to reflect on a powerful source of information that may in the first instance appear deceptively simple. We need to look at ourselves. What would an Asia engagement audit reveal? How many personal narratives, experiences and connections with Asia across our school would an Asia engagement map reflect? And that's just our staff. There are also our students. Sometimes the simplest classroom conversation becomes a catalyst for sharing, deep thinking and authentic learning. We need to recognise and use the rich and diverse cultural and linguistic resources within our own school community. We should move our pedagogy into the product-oriented learning. That is, we all engage children in making things, in marketing things, in making books, making movies, and understand how they can market their products globally. Today with YouTube, today with eBay, they have a global market. But our children have to understand how to reach to other people. When I say market, it does not necessarily mean making money but simply meaning you understand other people's needs and how do you want to make use of your talents and knowledge and time to help better other people's lives. And finally, the context. Our school has to open its doors, not confine learning opportunities within the school property. And geography or locality should not define learning opportunities anymore. So the third element in my book, I talk about globalized campus. So three things. Student autonomy, that's personalized learning, as the curriculum. Product-oriented learning as the pedagogy. And globalized campus as the context of learning. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, today, I just want to really quickly show you how I embedded uh, Asian content into my Year 10 Fabrics class. And hopefully, the two ways that I did this um, exposed the students to how decorations used in different cultures, including Asian cultures, in uh, fabrics and clothing. Whenever students start a new semester of fabrics, we always get them to do a bit of a sample of stitching just to get them to practice uh, how to use a sewing machine. And this is the example that uh, we've always used, a traditional house design. And I decided perhaps we could come up with something that was 
a little bit more um, Asian focused. So I introduced them to um, some design work on fabric from um, Vietnam and showed them how I'd taken a design and converted it into a line design, as shown here. And students use that as their template to then um, do a stitching, a machine stitching sample on fabric. So students produce these stitching samples, which use the same skills as the previous sample always used. I was really keen to show students how different cultures had decorated fabrics and clothing and made them so beautiful. So I brought in from home a whole heap of uh, fabrics and clothing that showed traditional use of decoration. I also bought in some uh, pieces of fabric that um, were decorated using indigenous design. Students had to then um, use an observation sheet to document the use of the elements of design, for example, shape, texture, line, and colour. Students were then given an assignment using the design process where they had to design um, a decoration and apply it to fabric to make a coffee cosy. And the example I gave them was uh, this one that I produced myself, which is using Japanese shishiko embroidery. So I was able to explain a little bit about that style of decoration where each stitch is the length of a grain of rice and it's traditionally applied to um, indigo fabric um, using a white thread. So for this really simple design activity, students chose the culture that they wanted to investigate and be the inspiration for their design. And interesting enough, most of the students chose Mexican or South American, and a couple of students chose um, Middle Eastern design. And um, even though they didn't choose an Asian-inspired design, that really didn't matter. Uh, what mattered was that I'd expose them to design of Asia and hopefully improve their knowledge of how uh, cultures have applied fabric design in their clothing. Have you thought about what is available in the library for incorporating Asia into your teaching? Well, let's have a look. If you go to our Brighton home page, you will find the library system link on the right hand side of the page. Click on this. As you can see, we now have our catalogue system online available to teachers and also to students. Looking at our initial page, we can see that we have um, a novel at the front called The Small Bamboo, just giving students an idea of some of the new books that have come in recently, which are also available on the new items list here on the left, as you can see. If we wanted to do a fast find for Asia, if we went to the fast find tab, typed in the word Asia and enter, you will see that 255 results have come up on the topic of Asia. From fiction books like Across the Nightingale Floor, um, it also tells you the subject where um, the book is set, so this one is a Japanese fiction book. In time to come, we might also be able to add reviews after students or teachers have read these books. This search does also give you DVDs that we do have in the library. And then you would again scroll across these 10 pages at the bottom for your resource. Remember also that we have a large teacher reference section in the library. There are many Asia specific resources there. If you need any help, please just ask. All the library staff will love to help you. 
Thanks. All right, I'm going to talk to you about some additional resources, how and where you might find them. Perhaps you consider it a bit like riding an elephant, maybe a little bit to the right in that picture, or a bit shaky and bumpy yet adaptable. It's adaptable to different terrains and surprisingly fast if you get the one that seemed to have coffee for breakfast and thought they were an F1 car and started overtaking all the other elephants. All right, now our good friend Mr Google can help us out. And the easiest place to start is with the AEF, the Asia Education Foundation. You can put it into Google AEF, it's the top one that comes up and really shouldn't cause you any problems apart from perhaps some slow internet while you wait patiently for it to load. Alright, we can see here lots of different places to start off. You've got about, that next one that's missing says teachers, there's curriculum resources... Leading school policy and research. The best place to start is probably in curriculum resources. You can see there's a range of different subjects to choose from and they have lots of different bits and pieces um, already made and lots of great links for you to go elsewhere. We wait patiently, maths might load. Here we are now, maths has finally decided to load. Uh, what is an Asia-focused maths curriculum? You've got sample curriculums. Uh, they highlight the subject association stuff across the side, some other links for children, which is really handy. Um, you've got digital resources, another, another big set of digital resources in here. And then they come up with some learning resources for different year levels. We can click on Year 10 Population Maths and that brings up uh, how it aligns with the curriculum, some learning sequence ideas and some resources. You can see on the left hand side here the whole maths things split up and all the links to the other resources. We might click on Health and PE. And then when Health and PE pops up uh, you can see Lots of other information. They have videos here. This one's about taking the AFL to China. Uh, we have some cricket uh, and some Asian Cup references. Again, there's the links to the subject associations on the right-hand side. This one here points you out to Twitter and to what's going on around the place, and they encourage you to join if you're on Twitter. My favourite part of this website, though, is under Teachers. Again, you've got access to professional learning there, but if you so desired, you'd go on a study program. So they go lots of different places, obviously in Asia, um, generally in the holidays. So they've got some upcoming holidays this time around or in January, go through Indonesia, India, uh, and it has information about past programs and other things you can do. So there are lots of different starting points, the AEF is just one of them, but all in all you're looking for the right resource that fits you. You could be a range of different sizes, shapes, colours, it's going to look different for everybody. Uh, you don't necessarily need the original. Um, if you haven't already, you need to have a look and, and do your own Google and, and look for something that suits you. There is plenty out there. Salamat sa pakikinig. Kosecho, arigato gozaimashita. Kap kun kao? Shukran ala ishtima. Kap jai, samlap kaan hap fang. Merci ke gush kardi. Sunne ke liye dhanyavad. Nanna maata gara nuk ke liye dake dhanyavad agaru. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience.